Hello, community of St. Stanislaus and anyone else who listened to this message. I am Deacon Jose Alfredo Reyes, Parish Life Coordinator of St. Stanislaus here in Modesto, California. I come to you today with my second message. It was about a week ago that I send you the first message on the solemnity of St. Joseph. And today we celebrate the solemnity of the Annunciation. And it's precisely now in this place in our beloved church that I have chosen to speak to you in front of the altar that is dedicated to our Mother Mary, and especially on the image of the Annunciation that we have in the altar. The Annunciation is an experience that brings me a lot of different emotions, a lot of different feelings of very different natures. I can imagine this young girl, young woman, Mary, who was having a normal life. She was developing and, and living her life just like any other young woman her age. She had no idea that in one instance, her life was going to change. And it was going to change forever. On that particular day, when the angel came to her, I can imagine her. The angel says, do not be afraid. Hail Mary, full of grace. And the gospel say that she was wondering what do these words mean? What does the angel mean by these words? And especially when the angel says that she was going to become pregnant. She immediately went into this, whoa, 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 wait a moment, wait a moment. How is that possible if I have no relations with a man? So that's when the angel says, the Holy Spirit will descend upon you, and the child that you conceive will be named Holy, will be Holy, and you will name him Jesus. Jesus means the one who saves. I can imagine Mary at that moment and that turmoil of feelings and anxiety and all of the human emotions that come in moments of uncertainty going through her because she knew the consequences that will come if she accepts, if she says yes. She knew what will happen to a young woman her age to become pregnant out of wedlock. So she was in the middle of this storm and, 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 and hurricane of emotions when all, all of the students in a moment of intimate communion with God, in a moment of an inner peace that can only be explained by contemplation, in a moment of total surrendering, she says, yes, let it be done to me as you have spoken. And it's not that 
she was thinking, oh, my life is going to be great from now on. After all, I am bearing the child of God. No. On the contrary, she knew that her life was going to be filled with very difficult moments. She knew that. But she also knew that God was going to be with her throughout each and every one of those moments. And throughout her life, I am sure, there she experienced some times where those emotions and, and desperation came and she didn't know and she would probably sometimes question, where are you, God? Why do you keep so silent? You promised me that this child was going to be called uh, the, the son of God and it was going to be the king. Where are you? But almost in, in the same instant that those feelings came onto her, the feeling of peace also invaded her body, her soul, her spirit, knowing that God was with her and she should not be afraid. Her life changed forever. Three months ago, our life was normal. Three months ago, we heard somewhere in the world there was something about a virus going on. We started receiving messages about we need to practice good hygiene, we need to wash our hands, we need to, you know, all of the recommendations that were given to us for months. But life continued. Life continued because it didn't affect us. Two months ago, one month ago, things started to become a little more closer to home. And certainly the last two weeks have been very, very dramatic changes in the United States and here in California, even in our county, uh, Stanislaus County. About a week ago, we were, the church was, was taking new directives almost every hour. Every hour we were saying, we were communicating, well, we will not distribute the blood of Christ all of a sudden. We will not have masses open to the public. It's going to be private. And, and closing the, the buildings and canceling uh, meetings, canceling all of the events that we had planned. Our life was changing. And there was nothing we could do about it. Our life has changed. So it is precisely today in the solemnity of the Annunciation that Mary comes to us with the same message she got from the angel. And she's now telling us, do not be afraid. Do not be afraid of what is happening. Do not be afraid because God is with you. God is walking with you through all of this time. She's telling us precisely because she knows what she went through and she's now sharing that hope with us. We don't know how long this will last. We don't know, but we are facing this situation. So now it's our turn to tell God, God, here we are. Give us the hope, give us the strength to do just like Mary. That she knew that the, 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 the uh, consequences were not going to be removed from her life. We know that what we are going through has consequences. And some of you are worrying right now about either losing your jobs or you have already lost your jobs. Some of you are going desperate of being at home for so long. 
So Mary is now telling us, do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. Our prayers are with you. Every day we are celebrating through technology. And if I will show you what, how, how around the altar, the technology that we have to transmit live the private mass so you can experience it at home, you will be amazed on how simple technology is allowing us to bring this message to you. Yesterday, the first reading says that the water was flowing from the temple of Jerusalem and into all of the fields, how they were going to be irrigated. I feel that through this very simple technology, the water of life, the living water, is flowing from the altar of St. Stanislaus and is flowing into your homes, into the areas, wherever you are listening to these messages and to the Eucharist and to the uh, celebration of the Eucharist. Technology is allowing us to bring you the Word of God. You are in our prayers. Every day at Mass, we put you in our prayers. The staff of St. Stanislaus, not only of the parish, but the school as well, we unite in prayer for you every day. I hope that God will continue giving you the trust in him that will give you the hope, the love, the charity to endure the time that we are going through. We know that one day we will be reunited again, celebrating the Eucharist together and not fasting anymore of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. May God bless you. May our Mother Mary continue bringing our needs before the Lord so Jesus is the one who can do the miracle for each one of us. And may the Holy Spirit continue guiding with his light these obscure times that we are going through. Peace be with you.